Okay. It's a pretty cool app for a 30 some year old guy. Age is nothing but a number. That's what Aaliyah said right before she died. She gone. She was a nice lady. I never heard of her before, but you never heard of Aaliyah? Well, I I know there's a movie, and she was some uh, like. A there's por- a, did they do a movie about her? I think so. There's like a Puerto Rican. Wasn't she like a Puerto Rican singer? She's uh, that's Selena. Oh, <laughs> Helen Keller. Whatever. It's Let like, me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Whenever you are. <sighs> I think Aaliyah was a black lady. Oh, young. Prime of her life. She used to be an actress. She ever do anything I would have saw. I think her biggest deal was she starred in a pilot. What's a pilot? Well, you know the show's on TV. I don't watch TV. Yes, but you are aware there's an invention called television. television, And and on that invention, they show shows. Yeah. Well, the, the way, way they, they pick the shows, shows on TV is, is they make one show and that show is called a pilot and they show that one show to the people who pick shows and on the strength of that one show they decide if they want to make another show. Some, some get accepted and become TV programs and some, some don't and become nothing. I think she starred in one of the seven pretty flawless my program got stuck sorry my program got stuck beep beep boop beep bop bop beep beep boop ah yes welcome to couch pilots all of my friends it's the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots my name is jason and with me is my timekeeper it's captain philip rassisher good evening good evening my friend how are oh god damn it how are you what's wrong well, I got sawdust in my eye. Oh, well, you, you have been working with a lot of wood. Yeah. Well, I've been building the stage for CouchCon. And the stage for CouchCon? Yeah, I've been building I I built this really cool stage with for CouchCon. Well, let me let me just let me do a, a little bit of housekeeping right now. Last season was the Tuckley 10 too. Oh, yeah. I'm okay? sorry. Okay. Yeah. And we're that's over. We've moved on from that. <laughs> we're, and, we're not doing it until next year. We're not doing it again until he produces 10 more links. Get to work, Chris. All right. And then this season we kind of said, "Hey, you know, let's get back to basics. Maybe really slim down the guests if, if maybe no guests for the next 10 episodes and just you and I get back to basics." talk about what's going on here at Couch Pilot Central in the Pilot's Lounge, right? and then kind of ramp up. We, we had talked about months ago, we haven't mentioned it for a while, the event known as CouchCon that happens every year. And you're, I don't, I don't understand, though. You built a stage for it? Well, yeah. I mean, I want to make sure everybody can see us and everything when we're on the stage, because you know, with COVID, we're kind of DIYing it and kind of you know doing it. We can't do it like at, at, at Wembley Stadium or whatever. Right. But... Okay, do you remember anything about this year's CouchCon? Yeah, it's going to be pretty intense. We have Kiss performing, yeah. so the stage has to be really, really big. We, we, we do have Kiss. You're right about that. Um, and do you remember who's hosting CouchCon? Um, he's a politician, I think. And I think he's really short, so I'm trying to make the, the, the stage even taller. Well, I can't speak to his height, but former Republican uh, presidential candidate, and uh, he, I don't think he ever made it to the nominee process, but he was right up there. Ted Cruz. Oh yeah, yeah, Ted Cruz. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna he's gonna MC the whole thing. Right. So I got I got I got a stage built, and I I built it in sections so we can take it to the venue. So you're not you're not it. in the beginning stages of it up of the stage. You you you. <laughs> I got all, that. That's yeah. a good pun. But you're you're about done with it. Yeah, you I'm put in right. a lot of time and effort into it already. I'm, I'm getting ready to uh, stain it pretty soon. Got to stain that stage. You st- always stain it. Do you think stain? Do you think the band stain stain the stage? <laughs> stain stage stage stain the stage. Well, you know, I mean, you want it to look as great as possible for Kiss, and you want the fans to be able to see everything really well. I really, I really feel like you're forgetting a key component of this year's CouchCon that separates it from anything we've done in the past. I I know I know what you're thinking. Uh, it's, you do. It, yeah, yeah. The budget. This is this is the biggest budget we've ever had for a CouchCon. Uh, lumber is really expensive right now. It is and, expensive, and, and I, I I budgeted that, and so I spent about ten grand on lumber. Oh God! Because I'm doing it all in cedar. Oh my! 
So we're just going to... I got that, to, th- Those monies came out of uh, Couch Pilot's finances? Yeah, out of the Patreon page. Right. And... Um, $10,000. Yep. That's just for the stage. You know, I, have, I, I didn't take oh, into effect the, the stain. It's going to take about 47 gallons of stain. Not not the band. The, yeah, so it's our biggest one we've had. Each year is bigger and bigger. We were at Wimbley, right. Wimbley Stadium last year. Right. And so, you know, I wanted to go... You're Madison Square Garden. Here yeah, Madison that. Square Garden. And so I thought, you know, and I, I got all, like, the, the places for, like, the pyrotechnics to come through and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And that's already on the books. Down. Oh, yeah. The, the the fireworks are being delivered the, next the, week. The down payments are already made. and Oh, no. They're paid in full. The money's gone. Yeah. Why? What's... Why wouldn't why wouldn't you want a great stage with great pyrotechnics? I, I'm not saying I wouldn't want that, but it's been decided, and we've had other funds going into people on working on because I'm doing it for I'm doing my part of it for free. I mean, I'm using a router and everything, Do, <sighs> doing some dado yeah yeah you know. yeah the dado blades very good. Um, and that's fine, but there's so much money already poured into this. You had mentioned COVID. And we, when we, we initially made the plans for this year's CouchCon, we, we didn't so know about COVID. That right, wasn't a right. thing yet. It, was, yeah. it hadn't spread across the entire globe. But I think the thing that you are forgetting is that this is a digital, online, virtual experience, and no one will be there in person. Uh, oh, I fucking forgot about that. So, like... There's oh shit I forgot I didn't write that down. So ten thousand dollars for the stage, fifteen grand for the fireworks, and I had bought like special chairs. Like I had contacted a uh, like a what do you call the companies that like put on benefits? Uh, they serve the food and they mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, what is that called? Party down. Yeah. And, and so I had special chairs. They're like they they like ergonomic you know, chairs. Ergonomic chairs, and they kind of like they kind of like uh, vibrate, so people get massages. So that's another twenty five thousand dollars. I don't, so, I don't know why. And I, I know that. So okay, there's, I know that you and I have talked in recent past about how I do a lot of the heavy lifting. Yeah, because I, I was trying to take that away from and you. And I there. can appreciate yeah. your attempt to try yeah. to do something, but. I wish that you would have contacted me first because we've sold tickets to a virtual experience. We don't have any place that we're setting up. There's there's not going to be a physical in-person couch con this year. Everyone's going to put on a headset at their house and be taken to a digital landscape. Don't you remember that was Kiss was going to be the first band to perform to um, an audience of millions in a digital virtual space. You know what? That's that, is this ringing a bell it's, at all? It's ringing a bell now. Um, shit. Um, what are we gonna do? Uh, you just you've just declared tens of thousands of dollars have been sunk into this for nothing. Well, I mean, we got a cool stage that we can like we can. It's mobile. It, hold. Is it is it cool? Oh, it's super cool. There's like four <laughs> four tiers. Uh, the, the the backdrop of it is fire, like uh, cut in wood, like Damn. fire. Yeah. It's, Damn, that is cool. And it has L- LED lights on it. I, like, what? It has LED lights and stuff, too. Because I thought kids would want some LEDs and some fire Yeah, lights. I think that's in their writer. Ace Freely wanted some. He's back in the band now, yeah. if you knew that. Good. Thank God. So, okay. Star child. So, all right. So, scratch that. Well, so it's virtual. And everybody, we, we did sell out. See, I guess I got excited because we sold out tickets again. We didn't sell out tickets. It's it's an unlimited. That's one of the pluses of this year. It's unlimited capacity. Well, nobody's bought tickets in like three months, so I figured we sold out. Well, that might just be a lull. But I do want to circle back. You you said the stage was cool, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I get. I mean, I can't be mad at you if it's cool. It's cool. Right. I love flames. You know, I love LED lights. Yeah. Right, yeah. you know, I just love things that are cool. Right, so so 
Uh, CouchCon coming up uh, October 16th. We're going to have to up the price of virtual concessions, I think is what it's going to be, to make that money back. You know what? That's a great idea. Virtual concessions. Let me write that down. I can... Oh, write, I can, write this down. Write... Because um, what I'm, I'm going to do, I can get some cool like popcorn boxes that have our picture on the yeah, front of it yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And like maybe there's a button they can press for like likes or hearts, and every time oh. they press it, it's like 50 cents or a dollar. That's a great idea. I'll let you know. What, or there maybe there's like virtual tomatoes that they can throw at the performers. No, no, we don't want to do that. I guess Ted, Ted will. Ted, he's kind of like a softy. Like he is like Ted Cruz. Yeah, he's got that. I beard call him now. Ted because I talk to him a lot. Well, I just said Ted Cruz. Oh, did you mean? Did you say Teddy? No, just Teddy Roosevelt's dead. We don't have a wheelchair ramp. He's cool now because he's. We don't need one in virtual space. That's true. The crippled can walk online. The crippled can walk. Uh, we got a, a great lineup. Cripple can walk. It's got funny. a great lineup. Speaking of which, I would tell Rose that was a good line. Uh, this weekend, I was in Wisconsin Dells. You have got to, you have to go up eight flights of stairs for every uh, slide, right? Wait till my are you, are you at an indoor water park? Yeah. How how does that happen with COVID? How is there a communal pool situation indoors at a water park? How does that work? Everyone left there sick and or dead, right? No. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're dead. Anyway, I had to go up flight, eight flights of stairs for each slide. Where'd you go? Kalamahari? No, no. Wilderness. No. Wilderness, for sure. Uh, all day, every day. And uh, I was walking up, I got to the top, and this guy was just like me. He, he was with his kids, and he was fucking gassed. He was gassed. He was bent over, and I go... He was farting everywhere. No, he was just gassed, like, in, like, energy. Oh, out of out of steam? Yeah. Okay. And I go, man, I said, they need they need to have an, an elevator or escalators or something. He goes, yeah, he goes, man, I don't know how people in wheelchairs do this. <laughs> It was a great line. Was he, was he joking? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. But it, it was a great line. I was like, oh, this, this is my kind of bro. That's right. You know, if I was a huge fucking fat guy and I couldn't do anything, I would have a bunch of those lines preloaded too. Because yeah. you're not the first guy to say, hey, man, this and he's yeah. like, like trying to bro up with him. And he'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Terry Scheivel makes it up these stairs. Um, I Last time I went to Wisconsin Dells, me and my brothers were like, I said, you know what, man? Everyone's winding down for the day. Let's clean ourselves up and let's go out in the town and some, you know, some bars. We went to a place. It was off season. It was like winter, and um, there was a bar in the Wisconsin Dell called Nigs. N I G apostrophe S. Nice Nigs. I don't know. How something like that exists. Well, in Wisconsin. <laughs> that's, that's how. Good God. There are stones throw from Madison, one of the most progressive and liberal cities in all of these United States. But my God almighty, how do you have a bar named that? Yeah. There, there's like, there, I think it was, um, when we went in there, it was packed. And it was like a club almost. It felt like a club. I thought it was just going to be like a, <laughs> like it was. I thought it was going to be just like kind of like this shitty little bar we could go into. Yeah. Not at all. It was like it was pumping a bunch of young people in there. I think there's like like black bouncers and black like DJs. Like they had a DJ booth. Huh. And they at Nigs. <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. It's, I'm not making it up. Go online. How how long ago was this? Um, probably two two three years ago. We should look it up later and see if it's still good in, great. In the hoots. And then we we went to another bar too, which is m- way more low key, kind of sports themed. Um, but wow. Huh. That, was, that is a weird place. Wisconsin Dells is a weird place. And as long as I've been podcasting with you, you have been talking about the Dells. I remember oh, yeah, long ago you were talking about all the uh, Eastern Bloc Russians. Oh, yeah, that, the that Ukrainians. There. And, and, and I had a, a run-in with a Ukrainian woman about towels. And, and I remember and you said you can't get Mountain Dew up there. It's only Mellow Yellow, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. That was years ago you told me yeah, that. And I was, I, but I was drinking Modelo's all weekend. It yeah, you nice. were off the booze train then. Not now. Um <laughs> I wish there was a way to incorporate. Maybe, maybe, maybe someday in the future we have CouchCon at Wisconsin Dells. You know what? That is a great idea. Let's 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 think about that for 2021. Seriously. What if, what if we rented out the town? What if we just shut down the town? We just need to rent out one of the resorts. It's like a town. Well, I because I want to go to. I want the freedom to go to Noah's Ark. I want the freedom to go to Family Land. I want the freedom to go to Big Queef's Garden on a, Coasters on a duck boat ride. I want to go on a duck boat. This is what I want to do. I want to Deer Park. I want to say CouchCon. Uh, 
uh, participants, attendees. You have you can have to get in um, this town by this time, and then they shut the town down, and you can't go in and out of the town. I'll, I wanna, I wanna, I'll, write, I'll write it down. I want to blockade off the entire Wisconsin Dells for a weekend, and it's just going to be a GD Juggalo Party Town Central Music Fest, drugs, sex, uh, go karts, roller coasters, everything. I just want it, I want it to be madness. I want okay. it just to rain. I want God to smite us at the end. I, I should probably contact their governor now, right? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna contact the governor of Wisconsin Dells. Mm-hmm. So they have their own governor. Yeah, but uh, but but that's that's maybe in the future. Yeah, let's 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 talk about the present. We we uh, October 16th tickets uh, are still on sale. Yep, tickets on sale now. Go to CouchCon Pilots uh, Couch CouchPilotsPodcast dot com. Mm-hmm. You can get your tickets. Yep. Uh, Visa, Mastercard, Bitcoin, Diners Club, Diners Club. We accept everything, and it's gonna be great. Uh, Kiss is gonna start us off. With uh, they're gonna play two or three songs vir- virtually. I asked them to play Love Gun twice, really, mm-hmm. and then they're gonna play uh, She's My Cherry Pie, I think, in the middle. Oh, yeah, we said I want 80s covers, I want you to play songs that aren't yours, right? And uh, from a, a, a song whose uh, lead singer's dead, mm-hmm. who's that? Warrant, yeah, the lead singer Warrant. I think he killed himself. Oh, did he really? Yeah, he drank himself to death. Oh, so like accidental suicide, yeah. Okay. My favorite kind of suicide. <laughs> yeah, me too. R.I.P. Michael Hutchins. R.I.P. David Carradine. R.I.P. Butch Cassidy. Oh, R.I.P. Sundance Kid. There's a chance he was still alive. Remember that lady looked for him in that pilot? <laughs> He's not alive. What's a pilot? Yeah. <laughs> All right. What so, is yeah. a pilot? <laughs> CouchCon 2020. We talk uh, about Ted Cruz. We're talking about Kiss. Give us some idea of what else is happening there, Blake. Well, I think um, we're going to definitely. Uh, DSJ is going to. DJ, he he was going to do a DJ party. He's done that before. Yep. D, and, DJ DSJ. For people who don't know, DSJ stands for Down Syndrome John. He's one of our employees here at yep. Couch Pilots. He's uh, out there on the tarmac. You used to call him Tarmac John back in the day, but he's out there with the golden cones, directing us up, directing us right back. Right. Down. He he gets us up there. He gets mm-hmm. us down safely. You do everything uh, in the middle. Yeah, and he he really. He really he has he has had one hell of a life since he's been with us. Oh uh, my god! Uh, babies, baby mm-hmm. mamas, uh, his his mom getting in a plane accident with Harrison Ford. Yeah, a lot of stuff has happened. Um, and 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 during this season, we're we're going to dive into a lot of the lore that people maybe have been have missed. Yeah, we don't want the show to be four hours long. So when we have guests, we like to entertain them and talk to them, get to know them. But we're going to maybe take the foot off the gas on that. And speak a little bit more because about Because a lot of ha- a lot of things have happened during this COVID thing. I mean, draw the you know, kind of pull the curtain back. Right. We haven't been flying. No, we haven't. Can't um, do it. We've been using sound effects and stuff and like pretending like we we're flying, whereas we used to fly all the time. Mm-hmm. But now we I mean we have to simulate it. And that's kind of how we came up with the, the whole thing. Because VR. of COVID nineteen. Yeah, because uh I mean there was flights where we had one or two people on, and you know we can't, wasn't worth it. We can't economically handle that. No, it'd be like building a huge wooden stage for no reason. Um, do you ever? Uh, do you think you have ha- had COVID nineteen? No. You, have you heard a lot of people say that though? Right? Like, I, oh wow, I, I think I had it. I think back end of December, I got sick. I might have had it. Right. Yeah. No, I, I don't think I've ever. I don't. I don't think I've ever had it. If you had like a guy come to town, like an ice cream truck drive through, and he's like, "I've got the uh, antibodies test," would you take an antibodies test to see if you have had it? No, and I, I mean, because Molly has even said, Stuart's Molly has said, "Hey, you know, we should go get tested." I'm like, "Why?" She's like, "Well, we might have the, you know, we might be the a carrier, and we don't know it." But that's always as soon as you leave getting tested, you could get it somewhere immediately right, and right. be a carrier. And, and you I, could you could probably get it while get in line to get the test. I did get tested. Did you know that? Yeah. And did I tell you about it? Um, you told me. A did little I tell bit. you on the show about it? Uh huh. Not 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 in depth. I it was mean, terrible. I hated it. It was painful, huh? <sighs> this is okay. This is what happens. You so, drive up in a car. Well, I went to um, I went to Dustin's bachelor party. Okay. And my girlfriend said, "I don't want to see you for a week because you might have COVID." I said, "I don't, I don't have COVID." Um, she says, I get tested, and then you know, if, and then a few days after that, you find out if you have it, and then we can resume seeing each other. She's mainly worried about her parents, they both have health issues. Okay. She, she doesn't want to give her parents it's understandable. Health I get it. So, um, she made an appointment for me. Uh, can't you, make your own appointment. Well, I was, I was, are you an adult? No, I went, I wanted to go downtown 
by the Civic Center. Yeah. And they said it's gonna be, it could be 13 days until you find out. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I don't want to. Because you can come down any day. And, and then they said well, from that day, it could be up to 13 days that you get your results. I was like, that's not good. So she says, well, I found another place. I can just make you an appointment. I said, all right, go ahead. So she did. And it was like an old Kroger's that had shut down. <laughs> Real fucking sketchy. So I, I pull in there. And I'm waiting, and I, this says, call this number when you get here and give us your name. We have your appointment. It will come out and take care of you. And so I'm, I, I don't get out of my car. Right. Woman comes up, and she says, hey, here's a Kleenex. Uh, can you blow your nose? It kind of it loosens things up. I said, all right. So I blow my nose. She leaves. She comes back with the test, and I hand her the Kleenex. She says, I don't want that. And I say, okay, I don't, I don't know. I, right. I, I don't know if you right. want it or not. I don't hear it. So then, and then she says, just lean your head back. And then she sticks a pipe cleaner up my nose. And it just the, the end of the pipe cleaner... It it just it just it just kissed my brain. It was awful. It's one of those things where it's Ugh. it's like it's one of those things where you say everything in your body is connected because why am I gagging if something went up my nose? You know? Right. So on a, on a scale of one to ten pain wise, uh one one being hey, I I I uh I scratched my Elbow, mm-hmm. uh, ten being I stubbed my toe in the middle of the night, half drunk, and it's throbbing in pain. That that cannot be. A ten's got to be like I just lost an arm. Oh, okay. I, I just lost an arm. Ten. Really? No, no. It was a. <laughs> it it didn't hurt. It's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. It did. An it odd did, feeling. Oh, it's so weird feeling. Yeah, okay. Like I kept feeling like I wanted to sneeze, and as soon as she was done, I just. I, I uh, got out of the car and I pushed the lady to the ground. I was so upset. Good, good on Got you. back into my car, put my seatbelt on, and then took dr- the seatbelt off. Got back out and kicked her in the ribs. Got back into the car. Put your seatbelt seat back belt on. Seatbelt on, and then ran uh, over her. And then I ran over her. Nice. But you know, no, I did blow my nose a lot, and then I, I cursed my girlfriend after. I was like, I hate your fucking guts, you <laughs> dumb cunt. You make me do this shit. I'm fucking in pain. I all hate for it. all for some poutine. No, no, there's much. You ever heard, there's, a, there's, a, there's more than Poot. You ever hear a love? Well, there's an asshole, too. No, <laughs> but you've heard a you've heard <laughs> no. of love? You've heard of love? Yeah, it was a series on Netflix. Yeah, she's got all the DVDs of that, so, I, so that's why I did it. Nice. All three seasons? Oh, all three. And two, she, two seasons. No, three. Three yeah, seasons? Three seasons. She's got, the, she's got all the commentary. Um, But that was awful. And uh, because of COVID, that's, I mean, it reinforces why we're doing CouchCon online. So I'm excited for that. Um. I I guess I might have to figure out what to do with all this wood. Yeah, that's okay. It's going to be a great experience. Sure. It's it's really before we had things you had to do at a certain time. You had to show up to certain events or people had like Big E. I remember had it. Remember he had his documentary about finding that other pachinko machine at the right. bottom of the North Atlantic. This is like you can you can build your own couch con experience, now. right? Because there's going to be a menu that you can go to, and like you know, if you don't want to go to DSJ's DJ rave, you don't have to. Um, if you want to hear um, Molly uh, give a, a virtual tour of mm-hmm. uh, the the you know the, the the plane, yeah, you don't have to. I mean, well, I don't know why you wouldn't want to. She's going to be in a bathing suit. Yep. Um, we we demanded that she do that. I, I've recorded a few things personally that yeah. I, that yeah. you have an option to click on. I I went ahead and I watched the movie Flight with uh, Denzel Washington. Remember that? Yeah. Where he's an alcoholic and and he he landed a plane that was going to crash. He landed it upside down and saved everyone on board. And I will be doing a critique of that film and everything that's wrong aeronautically. That's great. Oh yeah. I've also done a commentary for that uh, Tom Hanks film where he played Ch- uh, Chesley Sullenberger. I think the film Sully. was called Sully, and I, I've, I did commentary for that. It's basically just me jerking Sully off the whole time because he's fantastic. Sure, I met him in person. He's wonderful. Um, I've uh, I've been doing a couple of woodworking uh, videos that uh, a lot of people said, "Hey, why don't you put this on mm-hmm. you know the the Couch Pilots uh, YouTube page?" I'm did, like, "Did you do? A, did you record all the time that you spent working on the stage too? Or is that like a, a no? A, I I didn't do anything about that. But uh, that's a I'm, lost I'm doing opportunity. A, I'm I'm doing a lot of uh, videos of like uh, of like me using a Brad nailer mm-hmm. and a router because I love a router. I went to school with Brad nailer. Oh, he's a nice guy. He was a pretty cool dude. So you know, I got I got some. Uh, one, I'm, I'm really kind of proud of this. Uh, but you know, October. 16th it's kind of a couple month and a half before christmas yeah but uh i did a video a tutorial video on making a wooden plane to give to your children as a toy 
That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. So I'm hoping people click on it two or three times. So cool. I mean, those it's a little bit of a taste. We got a show coming Lord out Cup, next. Yeah. The show, a show next week that we're going to talk a little bit more about CouchCon, but I think that's going to do it for this week. Hopefully, it, it entices the very few who haven't already purchased a ticket to Couch attend. Podcast dot com. Visa, Mastercard, Diner Card. Yep, and we're taking Bitcoin, right? Yep, all manner of, of virtual currencies. Yep. Um, October sixteenth, be there or, or won't you be square? Oops. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fastened seatbelt sign. Oh boy! Today we discuss the pilot episode of Time Slip from the year of our Lord nineteen hundred and eighty-five. Now that was a great year. Eighty-five was a good year. Uh, the Chicago Bears oh, won the Super Bowl. Was that the eighty-four Bears or the eighty-five? That was the eighty-five Bears. You might be right. The, the monsters Super, of the Midway. The Super Bowl Shuffle. The defense heard around the world. I was ten years old, mm-hmm. and you were four years old. Yeah. Do you ever? Yeah. Do you ever? Like my daughter right now, she's she loves like Stranger Things, right? Never saw it. Well, she loves it. It's, it's set in the 80s. And so my daughter's like, oh, I wish I was a teenager. Did she say, I love the 80s? She did. And oh. she wouldn't shut up until I ran over with the car. Um, but she can't stop saying, like, I, I wish I was a teenager in the 80s. I wish I was born late 60s, maybe early 70s. I'd be a teenager in the 80s. That'd be the coolest time to be alive. And I think, what do you think, Blake? Is there a time in history that you're like, this would be the coolest time to be alive? Because I think the mid-'80s, she might be right. There's some really cool music and happenings back then. I was going to say, when you mentioned it, like what time I thought would... 1776. Ah. You know. Uh, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Oh, no, that's when no? it's when we we became independent from Britain. Ah. You know, we came, the colonies became their own... You know, we became the United States. I mean, that would be amazing to have, you know... Mm-hmm. And to witness that the war of the aggressive colonies, as it's known over there, be aggressive, be be aggressive colonies, be aggressive, be be aggressive Ooh, colonies. Yeah. We did a great job. You so you, King George ate shit, right? Yeah, there, he infamously ate a plate of human shit. That's correct. Um, did you, so you'd want to be a you'd want to be like a teenager in seventeen seventy six. You want to be part of the revolution, right? <clears throat> because. Uh, like, if you're a teenager, you're not old enough to fight. You know what I mean? But, you know, you could, you could, you could, you're aware of everything that's going on and the mm-hmm. magnitude of everything. And, right. And you're probably getting some poontang on the side, right? Because all so, these. So you're, you're all old, the, old the, enough to get poontang, but not to go to war. Exactly. Oh, that, that's that'd be, a sweet spot. Me, uh, High five it. <laughs> Revolution. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be cool. We've been watching, I watched Back to the Future the other day with my daughter. She loves that movie. And, I was, and the way it's portrayed, like the 50s, is like that'd be kind of cool to be around back then. Not cool, though, would be uh, like the segregation. Right. Not that. Not as good. But I, I do think that, you know, that was a time where, like, you know, men wear suits everywhere they went. You went to the movies, mm-hmm. a man had a suit on. Uh, women yeah. were dressed. Yeah. And, you know, you didn't, you, there was no Walmart to where you saw uh, heavy set women in pajamas and a halter top with Crocs on. Are you on Reddit? No. There's a subreddit called People of Walmart, and it just has the weirdest fucking shit. Yeah. You see people with ass plugs, and like, a, like, so you know the ones that have like a tail on it. Of course, sure. of course you do. Yeah, the raccoon tail or uh, is, bunny tail. Yeah. yeah, actually, is there a, is there some kind of tail popping up from underneath the table right now? Nope. Okay, so um, but there'll be people like just clearly with a tail hanging out of their pants, or people wearing like Cinderella dresses, or I saw some women in lingerie Ooh. on this subreddit. It's like. It's every crazy thing. Like there, there was a, a black lady with a weave so large and thick that it went all the way down to her feet. Like it's just it's yeah. it's madness. And these people, there'll be a lot of secret photos taken and uploaded. But in 1776, they didn't have that luxury. Not only of not having fo- photographs in their pocket, being able to take, they didn't have a Walmart. Right, right. It's it's a different time. Yeah, give it a try. Yeah, you know what, guys? If you can, just give it a try. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, time slip back to 1776. Oh, and, and we'll do that right now in the year in 1985, and we'll go back there. In our minds. And we're going to do that so we can talk about some things that happened in that year, so we can be in the mind frame of the time in which time slip was made, because it's not fair to this pilot to judge it by today's standards. Yeah, one of the things that's been tried and true with Couch Pilots from day one is... We can't judge these pilots based on 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, in 1985, um, they didn't have cork bats. Oh my god! Uh, they didn't have um, 
a, a white claw. Did they you have know? super thick football cards? No, they didn't even have super thick football cards. And one of the things that they <laughs> think about this. You know, I will. I promise back you, I for will. a second. I'm gonna close my eyes and think. Are you, about are you gonna judge something on today's standards when in 1985 they didn't have? Band-Aids. No, I wouldn't. I, I mean, I can't make that. Can you joke. imagine? They didn't even have band aids in no. 1776. Man, can you imagine if they had them in 1776? I don't think this many Did, people would have died. Didn't have them in 1985 and do have them now. I would be oh. like, what happened in between? <laughs> right. Who stopped producing them? Where did where did they <laughs> go? Where did the adhesive go? So things that happened in 1985, September 11th, uh, never forget. Pete Rose becomes the all-time hit leader in Major League Baseball with his 4,192nd hit at the Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Sin City. You, you know, um, what do you think about Pete Rose? I put him in the Hall of Fame. Oh, he's the best, there, isn't he? There, there, there has been many, many people that have cheated in baseball since it was conceived. He just got caught. He, he just got caught, and to be honest with you, he didn't deny it, right? They they said, "Hey, you did this." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did." Yeah. You know, he didn't try to hide it. He's like, "No, I never used steroids, and my neck is six times." You know, he he he's already he's fessed up to it. He say did it. He didn't bet on his own team. So what does it matter? What does it matter? Nineteen eighties when men were men. Personal grooming they, took a back seat to doughiness and uh, when he got pastiness. The, so when he got this, you know, record. Mm-hmm. How many players were on cocaine in Major League Baseball? Every one of them. Every last one. Okay, so then everybody in the 1980s that is in the Hall of Fame... Take them out. Take them out, then. Pete Rose can't be there, neither can you, you Amen to that. High five that shit. (laughs) September 13th, Super Mario Brothers is released for the Nintendo Entertainment System. (laughs) You were a Nintendo guy, right? Yeah, we had one. We had (laughs) had, had the cartridge. (laughs) Got to blow it out, right? Right. <laughs> Get yeah. to work. What were your favorite Nintendo games? I, w- mm-hmm. I, w- I was never a big video game guy. Sure. So I would say Mario Brothers, like the first one. I mean, I spent a lot of time. Super Mario Brothers. So, yeah, well, that's what I meant. Super Mario okay. Brothers. Okay. You know, I, I, uh, Excite Bike, I believe. Oh, yeah. And Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Excite Bike was cool because then you can make your own tracks. Oh, I, oh, yeah. Awesome! Yeah. Excite Bike for sure. And uh, Tech Mobile. What, what about Skate or Die? Yo, I remember playing Skate or Die for sure. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That was before Tony Hawk was such a thing. You know what reminds me of... Uh, let's see here. What is that? Heel versus Face, right? That's a very 8-bit, that's a very 8-bit intro, isn't it? Sure. That sounds like uh, Excite Bike right there, right? Yeah. Excite Bike was fun. I, w- I would like to play that again. I have it. Come over and play it sometime. To your house? Yeah. Yeah, come over. Why don't you come over sometime? Why don't you invite me over? You're well, I'm inviting you right now. We can't. we got to record. Why don't you want to come to my house? Uh, it's because I know you're really busy, and I know that you don't like people in your house. Okay. Thank you for respecting that. I appreciate it. I don't want to interrupt you and your squirrel time. Mm-hmm. Squirrel time. When you look at a squirrel's underbelly, you either see a weird little pink penis or you see a bunch of squirrel nipples. That's how you can tell them apart. Oh. <laughs> not if you knew that or not. Yeah. That's how I know. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you. Uh, September 26, Kalina, the first captive orca born at SeaWorld, as well as the first to survive past infancy, is born at SeaWorld Orlando. You ever been to a SeaWorld before? No. No, ocean. Yeah, I, 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 I don't really like. I don't really dig like uh, keeping these big, huge whales and dolphins. Why not? In captivity, they love it. They live a lot longer. Yeah, but we teach them to do tricks, and like we torture them to get them to do these tricks. How do we torture them by giving them food? Come on, man! They're these... making them lazy. Late what? They can't find their own food. They talk to each other using sonic signals. Supersonic signals. Huh? This is the same sound as a girl when you put it in her butt on accident. What are you talking about? <laughs> um, I what about, I've heard about uh, dolphins raping people. You heard about that? Oh yeah, that, what, there was that uh, documentary spoof about um, a drunk history. 
No, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was yeah, drunk history. I remember both you and oddly enough Matt, who's a frequent guest on the show, have seen that documentary, yeah. and you guys are almost waxing uh, nostalgic about. I'd never seen it, but that sounds oh, yeah. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you want a dolphin to do what you want it to do, you got to do what you want it to do. It- An- animals are all muscle, right? They have they have to find they have to survive. Well, so they're no- tough and they're strong. So like, I I could not I couldn't fight. It, on his terms, in the water, I couldn't fight a dolphin off. I mean, he would rape the hell out of me. He'd rape me up and down the coast. They just want love like everybody else. Do you want love? No. Welcome! Oops. Um, I'm terrified of sea life, and I've never been to a sea world. Mm. I just keep thinking uh, about Jaws. Well, and I don't like to, like... I don't eat anything from the ocean. Right. Or anything from the river. I don't... Because that's what it says in the Bible, right? Well, no, it's just because I know that fish have had sex in that water, and I'm mm. not, I'm not eating anything out of it. You don't want to have, you don't want to eat anything that lives in a, a space that can have sex. Right. But, That's right? why I don't eat people. Yeah, you don't. Would you eat a person? Uh, Come on, maybe. Come on, you eat a person. If I had to, you take a little bite, wouldn't you? Yeah, you know, if I had to, if I was, if I was hungry, if I was hungry, <laughs> you take like a nibble off of somebody. Like if you if you had no other choice, like what, yeah, like the butt part, like you need a human rump, right? Yeah, so I like, make a rump roast. A little roast on the bottom. Would you eat a person in a New York minute? You ate you ate goat tongue and everything. Of and course, I I wouldn't even have to be hungry. You ate brains before. I I would not eat brains. The line for me is brains, genitals. I'm not a fan of organ meat and eyeballs. What's wrong with the organ? Um, I don't know. I'm not really a, a part of the Norwester. I got it too. And with that, I am safely and securely in the mind frame of 1985. Good times. How old were you? We already said that. Why do we choose to watch Time Slip? Well, there's three simple criteria. Uh, for us to watch a pilot on this television show, it A, had to be a one and done. Uh, it failed. Whether it aired or not is irrelevant, but there was only one made. Number two, we had to find it on the internet. And number three, it had to be free. Yep, that's exactly right. So you're probably asking your dumb self, where can I find the entire episode of Time Slip to watch on your own? Well, you can do so by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes. Or go to YouTube, Blake. You know what to do, too. I'm going to get a beer. Uh, I'll get it. Tennis. I'll get it. Uh, right. Prepare for takeoff. Please. I'll take another dank meat, please. Dink Meme from Savoy, Illinois. Triptych Brewing. Tall Boys. Silver Cans with Stickers. A Hazy American Pale Ale featuring El Dorado, Azaka, and Citrus Hops. I would read that, and that doesn't mean anything to me. That Those words do not entice me to buy or not buy a beer. Uh, citrus Hops does be. I had some, I had some uh, cool beers from a, a brewery I'd never had before up at Wisconsin Dells. Yeah. What, why did you go up there? Uh, Eli went through the end of the year last year with online school. Hell yeah. And he, he still got straight A's. He went through the whole summer by himself during the day. Didn't burn the house down. Uh, I needed a break. Molly wanted to spend some money because she'd already had a break, you know, by going to Palm Pan- Springs, Panama City. Panama City Springs. And so, you know, we went, we went up there and just, you know, tried to get away and kind of forget about life and all the problems that's going on. Well, here's the thing. Eli is a very good boy. Yes, he is. Uh, outside of his uh, porn escapades, which nobody can fault him for, right? Mm-mm. Couldn't fault him for that whatsoever. Oh, <sighs> boy. Uh, summary of the pilot. A computer hacker battles ev- evil computers and other hackers electronically. I give this a D. Oh, yeah. I give it a D. Because that summary, Ooh, yeah. that summary does not match the experience that you get watching this. Hey, guess like, what? You, you're right. Yeah. I, yeah, you're right. No, a little foreshadow. I have a question later on is, what does the hacker have to do with this show? Beep, pop, boop, beep. You ever heard You ever wish you are a hacker? <laughs> Some people have called me a hacker. Yeah, I mean, I've been out in your garage with you before. I've seen you hack all over the fucking ground. It's disgusting. I've seen you hack into soda cans, beer cans, cups. 
I think we're talking about computers, though. Oh. Um, I think in the... Uh, I think... What I I, did, I I don't think that wanting to be a hacker was as appealing as wanting to be a pirate radio guy from like pump up the volume, oh, like Christian yeah. Slater. Like to me, that would have been more cool. Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Dance, dance. dance. <laughs> yeah, great flick. Great. Um, what is it about that 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 entices you so much? Uh, it was like podcasting before podcasting was podcasting. I mean, you know, here here you're you're. Illegally going on the radio waves, nobody knows where you're from, or and you're saying or playing anything you want, and yeah. you know, for me, it's the wooden legs. <sighs> Interesting facts, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to Interesting Fox. Jason has scoured the internet to find facts about this pilot that you may not know. Please don't express your opinions to anyone else about these facts. Whether you find them interesting or not is irrelevant. Keep your opinions to yourself. Listen and enjoy. Interesting facts. Um, time slipped. Slip. Singular. Oh, boy. Um, was a proposed science fiction anthology program made in 1985 by Yorkshire Television for HBO UK. Kind of weaning ourselves off of last season's UK Yeah, it's, it's like heroin. You can't just stop it. You've got to like ease yourself off mm-hmm. of That's it. That's exactly so. right. A pilot was filmed and then broadcast on December 28th, 1985, but the show was not further developed. It's a fact. This show is built in the back of the back. Uh, old school. A pilot was filmed. Whoops. A uh, the show was planned as an anthology series in which the hacker character would have been the only constant. Okay. Fact. And I and I I I, I thought that 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 he was like a narrator for the month. I agree. Stars John Taylor, bassist, guitarist for eighties. Um, for English, 80s English pop rock band. Clash. Duran Duran. Flock of Seat Calls. Flock of Duran Duran. Duran. Mm-hmm. That was the hacker guy? Yeah. Okay. Fact. I can see. Fact. You know, when I saw his hair, I thought to myself, Flock of Seagulls, but mm-hmm. Duran Duran makes a lot of sense, too. When I saw his hair, I thought, Waka Flock of Seagulls. Waka Waka Flocka. John Taylor made his first film appearance outside of Duran Duran as the hacker in the pilot episode alongside then-girlfriend Virginia Hay later to appear as the blue-skinned priestess on the science fiction show Farscape Fact. Okay. Can't. While John did appear in the show, another's, another actor's voice was dubbed over his for the final cut. Fact. Oh. That's, you're not going to catch me. I was, just, I was waiting. I know, you're waiting. I was waiting. You, you got your guns loaded, but I'm, I, I'm following the woos. You know what? Not just loaded. Cocked and loaded. <laughs> it's like a pee. Yeah, cock like a penis, that's all. <coughs> when asked about what he remembers from Time Slip, John Taylor said, it was such a long time ago, I forgot how it was approached about doing Time Slip. Like so many extracurricular gigs, it seemed like a good idea until I found myself actually doing it, particularly clueless, or at least hating my hair fact. And also not knowing how to type. Yeah, was, he, was he a bad typist? He was a fake typer. I hate fake typers. Beep, pop, boop, beep. There was an unrelated show called Time Slip about time-traveling children that was aired by ATV um, in the 1970s. Unrelated fact. End of interesting facts. Good job. Thanks. Uh, Twitter responses. Twitter responses. Twitter responses. I wonder if Jason got some Twitter responses. Um, No. No, I don't have any Twitter responses. That's a lot of build up for nothing. <laughs> Sometimes we have guests on, and uh, you'll sing the Twitter response thing, and then um, they laugh because we don't have any uh, Twitter responses, right. and we had a lot of build up. And understandably so. It is funny. That's part of the... That's all part of it. Part of the charm. <laughs> that, yeah, that's uh, another another great bonus when it, you download it, and listen to Couch Pilots, it's, folks. It's taken us 225 episodes to make this a seasoned pot of... 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Seasoned pot of podcast. You never want to scrub and clean it. You want that nice and seasoned when you can make it. Can you give that me now. a cast iron skillet? Yeah, I can do whatever you want. No, sir, no. <laughs> I'm being serious. Can you give me a cast iron skillet? Okay. Um, yeah. Can you look for one and if you yeah. find one? Like an old dirty one that you can kind of kind of clean up and get going? Well, I want to use it. Oh, yeah. This would be easy to find, right? I find so much weird shit in my travels. You know right. that? Oh, no, yeah. I know. I, I oh, see yeah. pictures. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of I got a lot of weird. You know how many skulls I have at home? Thirty-seven. Probably not far off. Yeah. Uh, bleh, let's see. Let's put ten minutes on the clock, and we'll talk about the. Was it like thirty minutes? Yeah. About yeah. the thirty minute 26, pilot yeah. that is and or was time slip, and we'll go ahead and send it right over to you, Blake. All right, we're going to start off in the title screen. Is a is a, like like a scary corner building, like a hotel. And there's a bunch of scary music. Like, I, like I thought I was going to watch a horror film. It was like fake CGI, like green clouds. screen, gray clouds, very yeah. gloomy. And the music was very like, oh, I'm going to watch a horror movie of some kind or something. Yeah. And then they they show this computer hacker, and he's uh, fake. Like I said, fake typing. And I assume he lives in that building. Yeah. And it's very dark. Very kind of dingy. He's, he's the only light is coming from the monitor, you know that right. kind of. And this thing. is the old eighties monitor, so it's just it's just green. Oh yeah, it's like, it looks like a DOS system. That's John Taylor from Duran Duran. Right, and he's trying to find a password, and he's working yeah. at it. He's like, and he's he's narrating. He's like, ah, oh, I just I've tried so many passwords. I just need to find the password. A password to the future, and all. And, he, and while he's doing this, there's a lot of saxophone and like synth yeah. and drums. It went playing it, it went from scary music to like. To like sax and like sexy music. Oh yeah! So and sexy. Uh, guess what? He finally tries the word ti- to the password time slip. Identity hacker password time slip. So then you get some more bad computer graphics, very swirling bad. lines. It's this is the kind of the intro to it. And this in this episode this, is this called. Is, this is showing you that he got in. Quit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. This is kind of like. The segue from seeing him and his environment to to getting in. You're, yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's good. Um, what was the episode called? I, I, I didn't write it down. The Block. So you got some uh, more bad CGI. It's a building. It looks kind of like Tron. There's a lot of like bright blue neon. Right. Yeah, it's definitely not like a like a HD quality oh, no, like no, scan no, of no, this. No, this is no, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> There's a, a metal gate that opens up. I don't. I don't understand this. I don't know how it bleeds into the rest of the show at all. But when this metal gate opens up, there's like a Mad Max style vehicle. And it's on fire and it drives through. What does that have to do with the rest of the show? I have no idea. High five that shit. I wrote. I wrote taxi death car, Mad Max. High five it. Because it was a taxi. What does that have to do with the rest of the show? Well, it's getting it's getting the main character to work. Is that showing that the outside world is very dangerous? Yes. Yeah. So dangerous that the car has to be on fire? I guess so. I don't get it! We meet Greg Shankin, and he is uh, he works at this building. Mm-hmm. And uh, the eye security, like, you know, they have the, the whole scan thing, lets him in. And he goes to his office. It's very gray. Gray and black is a big color scheme. It's so dull so, and like and very streamlined. Very you know, there's the, like uh, dystopian future, ho hum blah. Every, yeah. There's automatic sliding doors, and there's a responsive AI, artificial intelligence, called Candy. I feel good about Candy. I feel good. About candy. R.I.P. L. Cool J. What? <laughs> That's news to me. I always break things to you. Um, they, it, the main guy, Shankland, he looks like Rob Lowe <laughs> from Tommy Boy. You ever see Tommy Boy? Uh, probably. I thought he looked like a young. What's the guy from? Uh, John oh, Cryer. Only man on the earth, or what? From Sarah Will Life. Forte. I think he looks like Will Forte without a beard. That's so weird. I didn't write it down, but there was a point that I thought he looked like a young Will Forte. That's I so find that fucking shit. weird. <laughs> that, no, that's really weird. No, yeah. I, there was wow. one other person that I thought he looked like, but I couldn't place it. I, I kind of thought, who's Frazier's brother? Niles. It, he kind of had a Niles look to I him. I can't remember that guy's name. He was in What Hot American Summer. Uh, any, oh, David Hyde Pierce. Yeah. Um, but no, the guy, he looks, he's very, the way he's dressed is very 80s. And then uh, Tommy Boy was early to mid, like, 94-ish, I think. And so, like, 
Rob Lowe had the very slicked back hair, almost like the same kind of Rob Lowe character from Wayne's World, the kind of the douchey bad guy. Right. That's that's kind of what he looked like in this kind of you know, the the pleated khakis. Right. So he's having a conversation with Candy. Uh, she's a computer uh, uh, secretary, basically. And then we we see Jenny, who is in the elevator, trying to get permission to go up to, to go floor eighteen, floor I think, eighteen right? to see Greg. And uh, what does Jenny look like? Jenny looks like she was uh, in a white snake video. Big hair, big white, hair. white lady, big hair. Uh, uh, her makeup accentuated her cheekbones. And this must be Virginia Hay, at who? The, hey, 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 hey. Who, who? John Taylor from Duran Duran, the, the hacker, was dating at this point. Oh, of course he was. But um, her name is yeah Jennifer Lee. And she doesn't have access to go up there, so she has to get permission from Greg Shanklin, who is up there. And he says, yeah, go ahead and bring her on up. So she comes up. And uh, oh, this it, is Lee. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, as she's coming up, when, when, when Greg says, yeah, let, you know, let her up, he goes, hey, Candy, put on some soft and sexy music. Yeah. This is this is the Siri of the day. Candy is the modern-day Siri and or Alexa, right? Uh, yep. Alexa Bliss. Uh, Mrs. Lee and Shanklin, they, they work kind of work together in the same building, I assume, but it's, it's, it's very clear that they're seeing each other, but this is not allowed. And he says, we, we've been found out. So they're kind of like... She, yeah, she's like, we have to break up yes. because we've been found out. And they know that there are going to be big time consequences for this. Right, somebody's so going to lose their job. And, and they, made it, they made it talk in the beginning of it like... Jobs were very scarce at this time. It's like you know a, a post-apocalyptic world. So my research has found out too that that is exactly the case. That very few people have jobs in this future. So so losing your job, I think, is a massive, massive deal. Right. And so they were dipping their pen in the company. Hell yeah. Doesn't work. She's like, we're breaking it up because they're going to find out about us. And he's like, no, no, we, we, I love you, and I don't want to lose you. Yeah. And so he decides, you know what, Candy, turn off. All the security erase uh, the fact that we're up here. We're going to go up to this sex deck. What I, I don't know what floor it was. Like it's 30, very bizarre. Uh, he he this talks is to where Candy. He says, "Take us offline. We want some privacy." And, and Gra- uh, Greg's job title is controller. I don't know what that means. It's something to do with it's something to do with people's credit. But he he knew he'd be fired if him and Jenny were found out. So he doesn't want to lose her. And yeah, and here we see like a lot of shots of like computer monitors and more dark gray hallways and a lot of like security scans. So everything's being monitored big brother style all the time. And then, yeah, you're right. They're in some weird part of the building that has like there's circulating a lot of, strobe lights. Yeah. And there's a lot of, I wrote down, uh, I got a lot of clearance in the building, quote unquote offline. So they go up to this, this, this office, I guess, or a conference room and they start kissing and they're like, Hey, you know, we can't do this or whatever. And then all of a sudden, uh, the next screen, and these are shots back and forth, like you said, of computer screens and stuff. It's it's very montage And you go back and it, it, you see a, a shot of Greg putting a bunch of pillows on like a desk, yeah. a, a big, huge cor- conference desk. Now, everything is very dark. And you're like, what, what am I looking at? What, where did, what, what is these... this furniture? Where, what, right. where are we? We don't know. But there are pillows there. And they get it on. This I wrote down. <laughs> I wrote down softcore porn. This is the sexiest fuck fest we've ever seen we, in a I, pilot. I have it, never. It is right. Yes, and it's on. It's for a very long time. This it, isn't they, a couple seconds. They dig in. They dig in. Uh, you see boob. Greg is clearly being blown at some point. And you actually like. Okay, so this is all fine and good, but when you get a close up shot of a man having an orgasm, right, like a woman. It's kind of it, it was uncomfortable. Like, I liked it. Do you, do you know what I'm saying though? The the, the shot of him like his, with his head turned his, side. Yeah, it's just his he, reaction shots from receiving it, sexual pleasure. Right, know? and it, it was and this went on for <laughs> this scene went on for and I okay so I'm watching we we get home from Wisconsin right You're watching with your son and Eli is in the room Eli is up there yeah and he's luckily he's on his phone yeah so he's yeah. not really paying attention but there's so much saxophone music that eventually even a 12 year old is like uh yeah. So he looks up and and you know he and he just goes like that and looks back at his phone. It's like I'm looking at way harder pornography right now on my phone. <laughs> that I've gotten, and a, yeah. And and but this goes on for a long this scene goes on for a long long time. There's a lot of gentle piano music playing the whole time. <clears throat> and then um 
Intruder alert. It, it, Intruder it, alert. I, I bet the scene lasts 90 seconds to two minutes, but which is a long time. But it seems like seven minutes. And let's be very clear. There is nudity in this. There is nudity in this pilot. And we've only had a handful of pilots that have done that in the 250 episodes we've right. done. Yeah. I mean, you saw you saw sucking of boobs. You saw caressing of boobs. Mm-hmm. You just you never saw the nipple, but you nope, saw... No, I think we did. I think there's a lot of sucking, a lot of sucking of boobs and caressing of boobs. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, Are you you're laughing not. at me? No, you're not wrong. <laughs> okay, I just, thank you. I just like your delivery. Um, since they're offline, another security camera identifies them as intruders and isolates them for interrogation. And then there's a, a different AI. They had the female, essentially candy. the female AI candy. But now there's a male AI asking them to identify themselves, and Greg's candy. Um, AI does not respond to him talking to her, any of his requests, so they're they're forced to go to a detention area for questioning. But they don't want to go. They don't want to do it, though. So they, they, they know what will happen to yeah, them. Yeah, so they decided to go a different way, and um, so they go try to run up to his office. They can't get in his office. Yeah, the, they're denied the, entry there. You know, and so they're like, oh, we'll just go break the power source, right? They said, yeah, AI says go to floor or floor section or area 26, and then they run back to the stairwell, and then they kind of whisper to each other unintelligibly. And uh, after that, they grab a fire extinguisher and they damage some cabinet to it's made of that's made of MDS. What is MDS? It's like it's not wood, but it's like not cardboard. cardboard. It's kind of like in between. Yeah, they they I'll destroy show you a piece it. upstairs. If you I, I would love to see it. Um, and, and I, I think they're doing that to maybe like hurt or damage the AI. I don't know. Right, they're trying to turn it off. And the AI, the AI I then enhances what they said in the stairwell. And it takes a long time for it to go through this too. They're they're yeah. taking shots of Jenny and Greg going up hundreds of stairwells, and wh- while they're trying to figure this out. Yeah, they were really gassed at the end there. Oh, um, kind of like me at the water park. Kind of like that. Hey-o! Oh shit! <laughs> hey, we'll bring it back, baby. Hey. People can say a lot of things about our show, but we have continuity. <laughs> yeah, people can say that about us for sure. Um, so let's see here. The uh, the AI now sees them as a big time threat since they're not listening to them. The AI and they're not uh, they're damaging things, right? And so the then it releases like some poisonous gas it's or a, something. It's an acid gas, and, and then they head to the the like a higher part of the building to get away from. And then they get a, he uh, Greg gets an electrical shock, which. Puts his hand out of commission, but yet he's okay. But he his hand in, in in the film is gray and bloody. It looks like it's been electrocuted, but he can still use. It. Jenny is now like uh, working the computers, and Greg is blocking some door. And then there is a vacuum protocol now in place, and they make um they make it to the next room, and saxophone music starts yeah. playing up big time again. <laughs> I wrote sexy saxophone music. Hell yeah, uh and. This is where the countdown starts. Yeah, so he's like, "All right, Greg's like, okay, fine. We'll go to the detention suite. We'll, you know, we'll go there." He pretty much says, "30 seconds. Look, I surrender. We'll right. do what you say." And then the elevator shaft opens up, and it's empty, and it seems like there's a very strong vacuum oh, trying to suck it, them yeah, into it, it, that shaft. It's a huge vacuum that the AI has uh, done to erase because. They keep saying the word erase, yeah. yeah. Erase. Erase the threat. Uh, And a big old, like, barrel of something comes up, and you think... It's like rolling at them. Yeah, you think it crushes them, it doesn't. Uh, They're still alive, and then all of a sudden... uh, So Jenny's, like, passed out. Mm -hmm. Greg's barely making it, and he's in in Candy's inner arms, his arms. And then all of a sudden... uh, I'm sorry. Jenny is in Greg's arms. And all of a sudden, Candy is like... I thought she was dead. Oh, I thought she was dead, too. Uh, Spoiler alert, she wasn't. Candy says, hey... I'm back on. You, hey, Greg, I I, I I saved you. Didn't she say, um, I've been monitoring the whole time? Yeah, I've been here the whole time. And Jenny was planning on killing you. I did not hear that. I, I did not hear that part. I thought she said that that Jenny was planning on killing him, maybe to save her own job. That That could be true, because this is where it takes a twist. This is where it actually gets interesting. So uh, Jenny wakes up. And he, she's like, I'm, I'm, you know, and and Candy does some kind of scan of right, and you know, she she has no oxygen and she's tired or whatever. So Greg's like, you know what? Put her in the put her in the tube. It's some weird clear triangular prism sort of tube. 
And then once she's in it, a green beam of light comes from above and she Onto her lo- head. And she looks up and into it and is almost like paralyzed by it. Like right. she's frozen. And and she's no longer like tired and beat up looking. She's perfect, but she's and then she's frozen. Uh cut to Greg in the elevator. Uh Candy says, Hey, by the way, you remember earlier when I told you you had a voicemail? And he's like, Yeah, go ahead and play it. And it's the bosses talking to him about his relationship. The, it sounds like he just gets a slap on the wrist. Right. Like they went through all this horrific shit, like seemingly for nothing, though, right? The last thing I wrote down, was Jenny real or a robot? Wow, I didn't think about anything like that. That's crazy. At the end, you got the hacker from the very beginning of the show, John Taylor from Duran Duran. Apparently... He had been watching that entire thing on his I, computer? I, I cannot tell. I cannot say. I cannot confirm or deny. And then he has some sort of kind of quip to sum up the entire experience that we just saw. And then there is a shot of the exterior. Again, that kind of um, weird triangular brick building. Maybe a, a dank apartment with all the gloomy... Uh, a dank meme apartment? A dank meme apartment. That's, uh, I think that sums up the whole experience. Please remain seated. Ten minutes exactly. I like that guy. You know what? You're very creative. I really appreciate you. But I do have a timer in front of me, just so you know. I mean, it does. Okay. That's fine. Um, turbulence. It's a it's a term used uh, in airplanes, but also in this podcast. Sure. It's like what was wrong? Why didn't this work? And that's what we're going to go over right now. What What do you think? Well, first of all. I don't know what the show is about. To me, is it about a hacker? Is it about a weird sex life? Or is it about computers taking over in an apocalyptic world? Well, what I do is I do all the research for the show. I build up all of my show notes. And then I watch the show. So I had an idea of what this was going to be before I went into it. But you always go into it kind of blind. You, oh, you yeah. Kind of, which I is ba- good. I, I barely get it watched before you get here. But No, but we we have, you and I have kind of different experiences because sure. I, I have a little bit of knowledge going into this. Right. And, and you watch it completely fresh, which... which and right, because... I, maybe we uh, are jealous of each other or envious of each other. Oh, of, I'm not the jealous way, of you at all. Of the way we get to view it. Okay. Are you jealous of me? Huh? Well, I, I think is there it, anything about my life that you're jealous of? I mean, I, I can't think of one thing particularly, exactly. but... I find that shit. <laughs> but like seeing it with fresh eyes right. would be interesting. Beyond blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so for me, I didn't know where we were going. Like I saw this hacker guy, but then you don't see him at all during the show. He right. has no effect on the program. They they have sex for uh, seven minutes during this. and then That's like the, ten times longer than I have sex. If, I hear you. That, if I have that, yeah. But you... And... Um, so I didn't know where what, what we were doing. I didn't know what we were doing. Right. And uh, yeah, so it, to me, it didn't work because I didn't know where we were going. I really want to know. I think Jenny was a robot. I think he, there was something that what, there was what, something what, what, said in the elevator when he was you know at the end of this whole thing. Did it, she do a couple of beeps or bops or boops? That no, I but but you don't just put a human being in a triangle and yeah. and, and, and you know. So to me, I. I thought something was said. I didn't write it down, but I really think that there was something said in regards to the fact that he, uh, the hacker, I think said something or the combination between the elevator thing and the hacker that she was an AI. He, he was basically having a relationship with something he shouldn't have or whatever. So, well, this begs the question, Blake, would you fuck a robot? Fuck? Yeah, I would. Okay. So I've always wanted to have one of those like, Real sex dolls? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would in a second. I would buy, if okay. I had the money, I'd buy one. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I've seen those things. They're. they're I think they cost thousands of dollars. Yeah, right. I. This. Uh, this is honestly what I think. I think I would have sex with one. Yeah. But I don't think it would be very good, and I can't imagine wanting to do it again. And, and let me ask you this: If you did that, is that cheating on on a partner? Hey, that, that makes it. If, that's two questions in one. The first okay. question is I would have sex with it more than once. Would it be good? I think I have an imagination that is fucking insane. Mm-hmm. And I can put myself into any situation. Right. And so it would be a different situation every time. It would be great. 
So, so you you would be a repeat customer. For I would, that fuck I would doll. yes. If if I if I spent thousands of dollars on a fuck doll, I would have sex with it probably three times a week. I'm 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 envisioning a space, perhaps in a um, a low rent strip mall where you go and rent a, a sex no, doll not, for I'm an afternoon. Right. No, I'm not. No, right you, you dip it in. Uh, you, you you would steam it, clean no, it. No, no I want to have that connection. You want to pop the cherry on that on that rubber asshole and then just own it. Yep. Uh, that's a little fact about me. If I had a sex doll, it would I would be the only one to have sex with. Um, and, so so and, you you would have sex with it again and again. And second, I guess the second part of the right. question is, would it be cheating on a partner? That's a very good question, and we could we could get really philosophical about this, but we we don't have time to do that. But damn, um, I think if you're hiding it from your partner, yes. I don't know how you would fight a. <gasps> I don't know how you would hide a. Life size mm-hmm. sex doll, but if you were having sex with it in secret, yes. If you said, "Hey, I, I, you know, you don't like," if your partner is like, "Hey, I physically can't have sex anymore. I'm paralyzed or whatever," and you're having sex with it, then that that's not cheating. I think anytime you can't tell your significant other about something, something is wrong. Day, amen to that, brother. That, that's that's a one a Detroit yep. Avenue. But um, as far as Cheating on, I don't, I guess you, I think it's kind of, I always say this if you can't tell your partner about something, it's something wrong, or if you just completely flip the script, what if, what if your wife was fucking a, 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 a real sex doll like that? Was I able to have sex with in this scenario with my wife? It, could I, could I, could I be having sex with her the same time she was having sex? No, with no, no, I'm saying it's kind of like I said. Like, you already have sex with your wife. <laughs> it's news to me. Every every winter solstice, you have sex with your wife. No, w- w- would you be what okay with? Is, would you be okay with Molly having sex with a sex doll? If I was unable to perform, yes. Okay, so that's kind of saying like you're not cool with it because you can perform sexually. So she, so can she. But now, but so, if she said, "Hey, this is a kink of mine. I still want to have sex with you, but I also want to have sex with this thing," I'd, mm-hmm. I'd let her. I. I would, but because it's not a person, it's not. No, it's alive. not. It's not real. I mean, there's no emotional yeah, right. thing coming from right. that thing. Uh, I, I I can separate sex from emotion, and a lot of people can't do that. That's that's the that's wrong. What's what's wrong with society is I can separate sex. That, I don't think that's what we're talking from about emotion. though, because there's not. A, there's, I'm, I'm talking about a living thing being involved, and there's not. Yeah. Right. right. With, with a living doll, or well, it's, with, like, with it's, a, a, it's like if your wife uses a vibrator while you're even while you're having sex with her. Do you feel less manly? Not really. I mean, is it is it right. help? Is it help? Do you have to do less work? And does she get off? Yeah. So I'm, I'm you know, my manhood is not my threatened ma- by it by the fact that you know. So it's kind of the same yeah. thing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I always think, what would happen if I died? There has to be a service, right, that comes over to your house and cleans out all the weird shit in your house before your family gets to go through it. The sex doll would be one of those burdens. I, I've never owned a sex doll. I've never had sex with a sex doll. The real dolls, some of them look like physically like kind of appealing, I guess. But like the the, the fact that they don't move and it's well, cold move, huh? and it's like they're dead in the face, none of that is appealing it's to my me. my favorite thing. I, I, know, I know. You mentioned... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You lightly touched on necrophilia in a previous episode, a very previous episode here, so I get it. Um, what would you do to improve the pilot, you say? No, I, I like the fact that it's a an anthology series. Like, yeah. I knew that going in. You didn't. So right. I knew that the hacker would probably sandwich the episode and have nothing to do with the content we saw, but kind of be that thing week after week that would be the beginning and the end of each show. Right, but what's the premise of the anthology? Uh, AI takeover. Um, it's it's the 1980s version of Black Mirror technology. Okay. How is technology affecting us? Right. What is it doing? I've never doing? seen Black Mirror. I've seen one episode. And I, I heard that they they are they are out there. They're like they are. It, I heard it's, some of them are fucked up. But uh, I heard it's not far from like a reality base. Like I mean, this shit could happen for the most part. Maybe you and I should start a side project where we watch Black Mirror episodes. What do we call it? <sighs> um. The Reflecting Pool with Blake and Jason. I like it. Mm-hmm. High five that shit. Uh, if it, go, if it, it can survive, I think we're just going to continuously see uh, different ways 
in which um, the current technology in 1985, or at least the way they they thought it would be in the future, would fe- affect humanity and society, and we would see little snippets of that every week. Yeah, I think they they would in in, in entwine computers with uh, cultural things that are going on. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's probably about right. <clears throat> Hold yep. on a second. Hold yep. on. Hold, I know, hold on. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, as you understand, please make sure your staff and your Hold on. Hold on. It's kind of mean to do that because Molly really spent a lot of time on that. No, she really didn't. I know that she didn't. That's, to, to say anything other than that is a lie. Uh, Final Descent. Other people have seen Time Slip. Other people know about it. They've seen it, watched it. They've rated it. They've commented on it. IMDb, internetmoviedatabase.com has a score. People from around the world have rated it. Blake, what do you think people have said in a scale from 1 to 10 about Time Slip? I honestly couldn't find Time Hop on IMDb. The well, one it's because it's time, called Time Slip. Time Slip on IMDb because there was, there was, a, there was a couple of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't see. I would say they rated it a 3.8. It's a 5.9, but that's only from nine ratings. Critic reviews, Earl from thelogbook.com says, Sweet candy-coated Jesus. No wonder this never got past pilot. Television wasn't made to withstand so much 80s all at once. So let's air it once right after Christmas when no one's watching on uh, much TV anyway and call it done. I don't. I don't understand how he says there's too much '80s in a pilot that was done in the middle of the '80s. I mean, what else do you yeah. have? What else? What other influences do you have? And I can't imagine a uh, Jesus uh, covered in some sweet candy coating, like gummy bears, um, or like lemon heads. Some sort of uh, tempura Jesus, but with sugar. All right. Pour some Jesus sugar on me. R.I.P. Warrant. Uh, viewer reviews, 3 out of 10 scars, confusing. That's Def Leppard. What's that? It's Def Leppard. I know. I know. It's oh. different. Oh, I, me- I messed up your joke. High five it. Appa chapa chapa. Confusing, and I wonder who the market was for this one. This is from June uh, 7th uh, of 2020. Very recent review. This is from Martin Haffer. Uh, Time Slip was a proposed series that had only one episode, the pilot, The Block. I found it on YouTube, and I must warn you. It's a bit confusing. <laughs> Apparently, the show was going to be about hackers who jump into a time slip in order to see the future, question mark. In this episode, you see that in the future, unemployment is very high and employees are not allowed to have relationships. Why? I have no idea. Yeah. The story is about two employees who are in love and their efforts to th- uh, thwart the surveillance system in the building where they work, and unexpectedly, the building comes to life and tries to kill them. I know that this is not intended for the traditional three networks in the USA, as it had some nudity. I assume it was a pilot for some pay service like HBO, or perhaps it was to be sold abroad. The bottom line, however, is that the show is very confusing and dated. I didn't particularly love watching it, and assume folks back in the day who saw it felt the same. Explaining the show's premise and context would have improved it significantly. He was right. It was meant for HBO UK. Right. He, he, he had it nailed without knowing he nailed it. Uh, Steve W. says, oh, this thing is so deliciously and wonderfully 80s. Every frame looks like it came out of an MTV music video. Were you waiting to see like a Max Headroom? I was waiting for... What's Do an impression of Max Headroom. Max Headroom. Yep, I love Max Headroom, right? I was watching, uh, like I said, I was watching Back to the Future. In part two, they go to the future, you know? And one of the first things Marty does when he gets there is he goes to the 80s cafe, and you have um, Ronald Reagan on a television that comes down from the ce- uh, the ceiling. He looks like Max Hedrum, purposefully. Really? Okay. And he speaks like him, and it's wonderful. I never saw the second one. Is there one where they go to the West? You and I watched the first one on, on Dustin's Drunk at the Movies podcast. Right. The, for the first time that you ever saw it, right? Yeah. I can't believe We need to do that again. I, that that movie is so. We had to watch the same movie again. It's so nearly perfect. Did you like it? I don't remember much of it. Oh God! I know the the mom was trying to fuck her son, but she didn't. Know sure, it was, but she didn't know it was her son. So that's kind of cool. 
I've been into milk. You just, porn I was gonna say you just described fifty percent of the taboo portion of my favorite website. Uh, <laughs> I I don't I don't like. Okay, I'll, I'll explain to let's, you let's, for a second. Let's just pause and talk about the kind of pornography you like. Go ahead. What I'm into right now, uh, my, B- Blake's quarter. What I'm into right now. <laughs> Uh, I don't like uh, the fact, like, it doesn't turn me on the fact that, like, the mom is trying to have sex with the right, son. Right, right. My, my turn on is that there's a lot more verbalization during the sex. You like the buildup. No, I just like... You like a wordy woman. I, like vo- I, like I like a wordy woman. A wor- okay, so you like it when the woman is, is talking. Yeah, I hate porn where the guy's like, ugh, ugh, ugh. I've seen someone where like sh- I'm like to the guy, shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, shut your fucking so, mouth. So what do you want the woman to say? Well, and this is just like I don't know it's on, on these ones with the mom thing. They're usually a POV, which I like better. I like POV. You like better. POV better? I, I, yeah, I, I've known some people who like POV better. Yeah, um, but you, so you don't want to see the guy at all. No, you just want to see the penis. You I just mean, want to see fine, the insertion. But, yeah, and I just want to like you know. So the mom's talking to the son, and you just you know it's just it's just wrong. What they're doing is wrong, and you know she's she's just you know dad doesn't cut it anymore. Kind of I don't know. But it's always step sibling oh. or stepson. Mm. No, I mean unless you're getting into yeah. some really weird sites. Yeah, um, they try. They did put the step in front, like stepsister, stepbrother kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, so, so they kind of lay the base for <laughs> these pornos um, when it comes to like taboo and quote unquote family porn, where it's step. They they lay a base of like you are my stepmom. But when they're fucking, he just calls her mom. Right. Yeah. You're but, right. But they want to say that up front legally. Sure. So they can get past it, but when they're actually fucking, he's calling her mom right. or mommy. I, I watched. I clicked on one one time <laughs> where it was a dad and a mom, sure, and a uh, a, a stepsister and a stepbrother. Okay, like in the same room, and all of a sudden they were all fucking. And I was just like, that doesn't happen. Here, here's you know, here's a weird one I saw recently. You ready for this? Yeah. You get you got a married couple, and they have their daughter, and it's their daughter. It's straight up their daughter. And they, they, they talk to her, and they say, hey, you know what? Um, we want to tell you something pretty important. And she's like, oh, what is it? And she's like, um, you have been, you, you're adopted. You've been adopted this whole time. And she's like, oh, my God, is that right? She's like, yeah, you've been adopted. And then they fuck her. <laughs> how, how in, that, that, like, think about the logistics of that. That's insane. Can you imagine raising a child from, from zero to 18 only to reveal to that child that she has been adopted and then fuck that kid that you used to ride on a fucking playground with? You, you put her on a teeter-totter and now you're fucking her? I've seen that video. Have you seen that? That's insane, isn't it? That That's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. But uh, is the girl being fucked hot? Sure. But that has nothing to do. That's a crazy. That's, a, but, like, that's an insane but, premise. But, uh, uh, think about it, though, also is... The porn pool. I mean, your 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 scripts. I mean, there's only so many so many avenues you avenues avenues sauce. There's only so many avenues you can look. Take did I jerk off to it? Sure. Okay, but that doesn't excuse the people sitting at the the writer's desk of these porn films from from taking these. Do you think sweeping, there's a writer's desk? Sweep. Oh, big desk. <laughs> big desk. Oh yeah, these people are paid quite a bit. The, 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 the sweeping liberties that they take with the, with these storylines, it's unforgivable, unfathomable. I, I ejaculated quite a bit. But that, that doesn't excuse what they're doing. It's terrible. That is a, that's a low-down, dirty thing that yeah, they're doing. Yeah, it's bad stuff. At its core, it's pretty fucked up. Like, it, it really, it just you, really is fucked up. If you up. bring it down to this core, if you peel that onion all the way down to the core. Good God. It's stinky. <sighs> There's more, but I'm going to go ahead and skip that, and we'll just uh, go right to the landing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11, and the temperature is 69 degrees. I think we want a Taco Bell after this. Nice. What do you like at Taco Bell? Just I'm, I'm, a, I'm a straight uh, three taco combo, two soft, one hard, with a Baja Blast. Two soft, one hard, Baja Blast. You just talked me out of it. Uh, this is the end of the show where we say we've seen 
the episode. We've talked about it in depth. We've had our Twitter responses. No one responded. And we've talked about what other people. We've just, so much information is given. There, there, there hasn't been another podcast out there that has given this much time no. to this failed pilot. Yeah, for sure. We, You and I... I don't want to toot our own horns, Blake, but you and I are we're kind of heroes. We're, yeah, we're champions. Yeah, I mean, we we do the things that nobody else wants to do, and uh, we understand that, we appreciate that, and uh, you know, we 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 give and mm-hmm. give, and we don't expect much in return. I have never asked for anything to return. What are you looking at here? What are you looking at? Oh, that that microphone has a cord that's messed up. That, that's it's, fine. It's got a bungee. That's, that's fine. Up. You can fix it later. Yeah, it doesn't have to be during the show. I just I just saw it just now. Yeah. We now rate time slip. We talked about it. We've given you all the information. Now we tell you what we thought of it. It's going to take two hands to do it. That'll be fine. Do it later. It doesn't have to be right now during the show. You can fix it later. Okay. One to seven is the system that we use. One being the worst, seven being the best. All the uh, numbers here involved are taken and associated with characters from the program from the 19 ad 90s, affectionately and accurately called Wings. Number one is the worst score you're going to get, and that's the character from Wings known as Roy Biggins. Number two? Number oh, number two is Faye Cochran, quote-unquote Faye, Faye Yetton. V- Faye Yetton, yep. Huh? She was the nice little old lady that worked the counter. Mm-hmm. And those are the lowest scores you're going to get. Yep. Number three. Uh, Antonio Scarpacci. He was the taxi driver who never drove a taxi. He was always just sitting... At the counter. Arguably one of the most successful people from the show. Right. And that is on a Monk. Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. He was on Monk, and he was on uh, To Catch a Predator. Oh, he was all over To Catch a Predator. And I think he was in Walking Dead as well. Oh, yeah. He was one. He was the main zombie in Walking Dead. Um, number number four, four. Yeah. Helen Chapel. Nope. Uh, that, no? <laughs> no? That's why we haven't done this in a long time. Let's, who's number four? But Brodsky... Well, what do you mean that's why we haven't done it? No, I mean, well, that's why we should have done it more. Number four is Joe Hackett. Uh, yeah. number, number five is Bud Bronski. Number six is Helen Chapel. Number seven, the best score you can get, and that's Brian Hackett. <laughs> Captain Philip, rest assured, I turn to you. How do you rate time slip? I look at these pilots sometimes, and I just want to give a bad score instantly. I was lo- I was lost. I didn't understand what was going on. Right. I saw soft core porn for fifteen minutes. Sure. Um, I I saw boob, and whenever I see boob, mm-hmm. I give a boob bump. You're a boob guy. I am. I'm a boob guy. I'm giving a boob bump. I was confused. This was really didn't. I didn't know what was going on except yeah. for the sex part. I'm giving it a two. Giving it a two. Low score. Understandably low. I look at this show, and I think about the uh, the novel 1985, the dystopian future where everything was monitored and watched. What, was the, well, what year did that Bruce Willis movie come out? Um, da Hard? No, the one where he with the aliens and he was like that one girl that couldn't talk. It's it's Molly's, Oh, uh, no, I know the one you're talking about. Molly's favorite movie. Is it really? The yeah. Fifth Dimension? Yeah. Or, or, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or something like that, yeah. I never saw it, but that's oh, with like Mila Jovovich wearing like a white, like yeah. almost nothing essentially. Yeah. And I uh, never saw uh, it. Uh, 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 what's the guy from Friday? What was it? Ice Cube. Knock the fuck out. You, you oh, Chris of, Tucker. He's in that. Yeah, he's got that movie. real yeah. weird hair. Yeah, it, yeah, that's like her favorite movie. <laughs> Is and, it and, really? Yeah, no. And I, 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 it reminded me of where it was trying to go. Maybe not me at all. That that movie I felt was bright and colorful and wild. And this was boring and gray and dull. Um, like I said, me investigating this and knowing a little bit about it before you knowing about it. I, I get the fact that they're trying to create an anthology series. I cannot imagine an entire series of what we saw. Oh my God, I'd kill myself. Right. That's awful. But to think about it in terms of, how does technology affect you in that time period and all the different ways it can do so? It, it genuinely is an early version of today's modern black mirror. Right. Um, th- there is something to that, but it is done so poorly here, and it is so boring to watch, and I don't understand what's going on. And maybe what trumps absolute everything is that I do not care. I completely agree with your score. There is no booby bump from this man. It is a two. This is a boring show. 
I don't like this. I don't ever want to see it again. I don't want to see any kind of follow-up to it unless it is wildly different from what we saw. And uh, listeners, uh, if you guys end up watching this, we put the link on uh, the show notes. If you end up watching this, uh, send us a, a, a Twitter whether you think Jenny was a robot or not. I really would I really would like to know because watch it. If you're going to watch it, watch it till the end, Kevin Clark, and tell me, was she a robot? Because I yeah. really think she was. And if she is a robot, hashtag uh, Jenny got bolts. Jenny got bolts. Yes, okay. Right. Um, and if she's if yeah. you don't if you think she's not a robot, Jenny from the block. Nope. Because the episode was called the block. Hashtag, hashtag Jenny got boobs. Okay. I thought Jay from the block was good because her was, name it was, was Jenny. It was, it was good, but I, I I can't let you win. No, I get it. Um. <sighs> Yeah, not. I never thought about that. Whether or not she was a person or a robot, something or that the hacker said, or something in the elevator. I don't feel like it would ever be revealed, though, because if this is an anthology but series. Yeah, yeah. We we've seen those two people. We have seen their entire story, and now they're going to move on to something else. So, mm. so I don't think like you might be right. She may have been a robot because that would make. But sense. we'll never know. But that would make sense. Is why it was it was wrong for them to be together. That would it would it would explain uh, uh, quite a few things to me, perhaps. And with that, we close the book on time slip, and we will never speak of that show again. Yep. But join us next time, won't you please, when we watch the pilot episode of Ultraviolet. <laughs> this show is built in the back of his back burp. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. In the near future, global warming has caused vampires to come out of the shadows and attempt to retake the Earth. You can find the entire episode of Ultraviolet by subscribing to Couch Pilots and SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then simply click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube, and you know what to do, Tube. I wish you would just put a couple punctuation marks. It would be a lot easier. What's that? Just punctuation marks. Couchpilotspodcast.com. Your one-stop shop for everything Couch Pilots. Yeah, you can listen to every episode we've ever done there. Uh, you can search by you know whatever word you put in, it, mm-hmm. it'll come up. My favorite example is always a babysitter because we watched Adventures in Babysitting. Right, that's the one that always sticks out in my head. That show, uh, it was a terrible pilot. Yeah, and and this is one of the only couple, of the only bleh, 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 one of the few places you can find all of our episodes. Got mm-hmm. iTunes, the early ones are on there. Um, you can go to our Instagram page. You can you can click on our. Uh, email address. Why would you direct someone to our Instagram? No, I'm well, saying. When's the last time you updated? These are the things that you can do on couchpilotspodcast.com. But, but you, why you would you direct? Facebook why page. would you direct someone to our Instagram? When's the last time you updated the Instagram? 2018. Yeah, I think so. Why would so. you direct someone there? Why well, would you? Why would you ever in your life? They have options. They also can click on the dial-in number. You, you want to hear about can, the dial-in number? You can click on the dial-in number. You can click on what it, what it shows the dial-in. God damn. What the fuck are you talking about? It's just important for you to make me look like an asshole by the end of every show. Click click on a telephone number. What the fuck does that mean? No. Or click. go to an Instagram social media page that is inactive? It's active. What the fuck are you doing? I didn't delete it. <laughs> it's not active. If it's been sitting dormant for years at this point, it is not active, sir. Like my sex life. High five that shit. Uh, we also have Twitter and Facebook. Um, yeah, call us at 910-PILOTS-1. It's 910-745-6871. And I think we have a voicemail next week, don't we? Yeah, next week we have a voicemail. Oh, I can't wait to get to that voicemail. Um, and neither one of us have listened to it yet. So You, you can also go to Patreon. Profane. If you like what we do and you want to help us recoup some money from uh, building a stage that was unnecessary and literally tens of thousands of dollars went into to build or support us to help us keep the lights on here at the FCF Network, won't you please go to patreon.com, search Couch Pilots, and send us a few shekels, or even a monthly donation would be beneficial if you enjoy the show. We sure. appreciate it. We appreciate it, for sure. Uh, do you have, well, okay, see, <clears throat> uh, up to this point, you've been doing a lot of uh, messages of positivity. Last season, you kind of built up this... Uh, a lot of famous people. Famous people from the UK. It turned out to be a, a myriad of serial killers. Right. Which is terrifying. Because I'm into them right now, too. Um what is the focus now? Do you, do you want a moment at the end of the show to kind of bark about whatever you want? I don't want to bark. I, I just, uh, during the, you know what? 
I'm gonna do a potpourri this 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 season. I'm gonna do a potpourri of Blake's corner at the end. Please, what what does that mean? What does that look like? A potpourri is just it could be any number of things. It, it's not specific to one subject. Is potpourri similar to the word casserole? Yes. Um, we're all going through trying times right now. Yeah, we're, we're, we we can't get our head above this COVID thing. Uh, there's wildfires going on that I watched a video the other day where there was there was ash raining down on uh, on San Francisco. It it was the color of the sky and it was just crazy. Uh, there there was hurricanes going on that were just blowing through things and and I guess that's the only reason I stay in this state that has taxes that are unfucking reasonable it's because i'm protected from 90 percent of the things except tornadoes are we in end times we are in something something is this is life has not been jarred this much for for the world right for Either, for what since World War Two, Kim Jong Un is even like giving up some of his power to his sister, who I love Asian women, but that lady looks like a scary fucking bitch. So what I'm trying to say is, yeah, what are you trying to say here? A lot of shit's going down. A lot of shit is bad. Find something good. I right right now I can think of something good. Uh, I have two close friends right. that haven't had a vacation together. And since 1997. Yeah. Talking about me. They went up into the mountains. Yeah. Wait. They listened to couch pilots drinking coffee in, on the front porch of a cabin. Who is this? Dee Dee and Barb. They finally got a vacation together. They've been working their asses off for years and years and years. Never had the same time off. They go up into the mountains. They have a quiet, relaxing weekend. They sip coffee. They listen to couch pilots. And they just decompress. They forget about everything. There's mountains in Australia? Yes, there are. Huh. It's, it's, it's a stack of dead kangaroos. You learn something new every day. Every day? This All is day. a message of positivity. Uh, it is. It's just, just take a moment and don't, don't get on your Facebook. Don't get on the news. Don't do it. Look at somebody that you love. Appreciate somebody that you love. Give them an open mouth kiss. And it, Yep. Do that. Thanks for ruining it. All right, fuck me. I'm done. Hey, fuck you. This pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Way well, makes happy every every. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day.